Spiritual Life Center. Transforming lives as we love, serve, and remember who we are. One heart. where you're meant to be, whether you're live streaming or you're here with us in person. Everyone is welcome here. Let's sing about it. I'm in the right place at the right time. I am just where I am meant to be. I'm in the right place at the right time. I am just where I am meant to be. Welcome to our Sunday celebration service that we bring to you wherever you happen to be on the planet this morning. We're grateful for your presence and we know that we are always one in the spirit for we're all interconnected on that spiritual level, that soul level. And with that awareness of that oneness, let us now commune with the presence and the power and the love of pure spirit. Divine Presence, it is within you that we live and move and have our very beingness in. And we start this morning with an expression of gratitude and appreciation. Gratitude and appreciation to be the vessels and the channels of this presence so that we may anchor and represent in our life all the qualities of this friendly, magnificent universe. The qualities of peace, love, and joy, and wisdom and all that is good and perfect. And as we make these qualities the activity of our awareness, we not only uplift our life, we uplift the very planet in which we live. This is our commission and charge of why we are here, and for this and so much more, we are grateful and thankful. And so it is, and so we let it be. Amen. With that, I invite you to join in and Simply affirm our five basic unity principles in the event someone ever asks you, what is it that we believe in? And they are these. 
God is absolute good and everywhere present. People are inherently good. Thoughts create our experiences. Prayer and meditation are how we connect with God and we must take action. Our Well Wednesday program for July 29th will be songwriter and multi-instrumentalist Matt Venuti. He specializes in the rare and captivating melodic percussive instrument called the hung drum. He was on tour making his way west towards Sacramento when the quarantine turned him around to head back home. Matt has recorded a special presentation exclusively for SLC from his home territory in New York State. So join us for this very special program at 7 p.m. this Wednesday on Facebook and YouTube. And we want to remind you that even though SLC Center is closed, several of our small groups are still active online. Some of them are the Urantia Book Discussion Group with Monty Richardson, a Course in Miracles with Sally Sion, The Yeshua Letters with Wade Edwards, Wednesday Morning Book Club with Claire Kinsley, Spiritual Exploration Discussion with Reverend Dora Phillips, and The Power of Silence Meditation with Reverend Janae Marth. So please go to our website, slcworld.com, for details about these wonderful groups, and that will tell you how to get in touch with the leader of each group. And we all miss each other, and a great way for us to connect long distances with a smile and a wave. If you are so inclined to take a short video, 20 seconds or less, of yourself, just a smile and a wave, no sound, and send it to ira at slcworld.org. Please put a smile and a wave in the subject line so Ira will know what it is, and then he will compile the videos and run them on Sunday mornings. And now Reverend Janae, Marth, who is the director of our youth department, has an update for us. Hello, I'm Reverend Janae, and I'd like to extend a warm welcome from all of us in Youth Ed. We sure have been missing all of you, and I have a couple of updates for you today. We've been doing some videotaping and collaborating on ways that we can reach out virtually and connect with all of you again. We're learning as we go, so we hope to have our first video out in our Youth Ed newsletter next week. If you don't receive our newsletter, you can sign up for that on our webpage at slcworld.org. I'd also like to ask our Youth Ed kids and our YOUers to save the date of August 14th. It's a Friday, and that evening at 6 o'clock, we're hosting a Zoom call. And we'd like to invite our Youth Ed kids and our YOUers to join all of us teachers and volunteers for a Zoom call to connect and to catch up and to have some fun with a virtual show and tell with our pets. There'll be some more information about that in our newsletter next week as well. If there's any of you that would like to connect with me or any of us in Youth Ed, please feel free to send us an email at youthed at slcworld.org. We'd love to hear from you, and we'd love to see you on August 14th. Until then, we love you, and we miss you, and stay safe. Bye-bye. We love to greet our newcomers. And while we cannot greet you in person, we want you to know that we are very happy you are with us today as you walk your unique path. You can learn more about us by going to slcworld.org forward slash connect. By filling out the online card, you can choose to receive our weekly message, find opportunities to connect with our online small groups and prayer chaplains, as well as be notified of greater ways to connect with us virtually as we expand our online community. Thank you for joining us today. We are honored to share our service with you and we wish you many blessings. Good morning, Spiritual Life Center. How you doing? It's Karen Drucker coming to you from San Francisco. I wish I could be with you in person, but hopefully this is the next best thing. So I want you to sing along with me today. 
So this is my magic wand. Wait. So if anyone ever said you couldn't sing, you now can sing. So you're muted, so I want you to sing along with me. So it goes like this. I start my day with love when I start my day with love. That's what I get more of is love. Got it? Sing with me now. I start my day with love when I start my day with love. That's what I get more of is love. I don't hear you. Sing loud. I start my day with love when I start my day with love. That's what I get more of is love. You got it. I start my day with love when I start my day with love. That's what I get more of is love. And here's the next part. You just go. Then you go up. Love, love, love. Sing it again. Love, love, love. Love, love, love. You got it. Let's do peace. I start my day with peace. When I start my day, I feel that sweet release. I feel that sweet release of peace. You got it. I start my day with peace. When I start my day, sweet release of peace. Then you go, peace, peace, peace. Peace, peace, peace. Peace, peace, peace. I feel such peace. Peace, peace. Peace, peace, peace. All right, you want to do some joy? Let's do some joy. I start my day with joy when I start my day. Everything I do is infused. Everything I do is infused with joy. All right, we have to rehearse that. Everything I do is infused. Can you do that with me? Infused. I start my day with joy. When I start my day with joy, everything I do is infused with joy. I saw you. That was good. I start my day with joy. When I start my day with joy, everything I do is infused with joy. Then you go, joy, joy, joy. Joy, 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 joy. All right, let's go back to love. Take a deep breath. I start my day with love. When I start my day with love, that's what I get more of is love. Ain't that the truth? I start my day with love. When I start my day with love, that's what I get more of is love. So start your day with love. That's it. Good job. Spiritual Life Center is a loving, vibrant family that welcomes home all people and accepts everyone, no exceptions. Weaving ancient spiritual traditions with emerging wisdom, we cultivate a spiritual deepening with the divine, each other, and our planet. So now we're going to go into our time of meditation and stillness. So if you would, just take a deep breath. And feel free for this next segment. You don't have to look at the screen. You don't have to look at me. I invite you to close your eyes. You could lie down. You just let yourself be for a few minutes. So let me teach you this little chant. In the stillness of this moment, there is peace. There is peace in the stillness of this moment. There is peace. There is peace. And I rest and trust and breathe and know that in the stillness of this moment there is peace 
So just take a deep breath. Feel like you're just dropping down with each breath. You just go a little deeper. So you're starting into your little chattering mind. And with each breath, you just drop down another notch, like an elevator going down. Just find yourself just relaxing that much more. Dropping down into the stillness. So very quietly sing this with me in the stillness. In the stillness of this moment, there is peace. There is peace. There is peace. In the stillness of this moment, there is peace. There is peace, and I rest. And I rest and trust and trust and breathe and breathe and know and know that in the stillness that in the stillness of this moment there is peace so you might want to put your hand over your heart and just drop into that place of peace see images in your mind Where does peace live in you? You can see yourself by the ocean, in a forest, on top of a mountain looking out. Just allow peace to come into your being, however that feels, with each breath. Let's sing it again, and this time declare it for yourself. I am peace. In the stillness of this moment, I am. I am peace. I am peace. In the stillness of this moment, I am peace. I am peace, and I rest. And I rest and trust, and trust and breathe, and breathe and know, and know that in the stillness, that in the stillness of this moment, I am peace. So anything you say after I am is the most powerful thing you could say. Just say, as we sing this one more time, think about what you want to say after I am. I am love. I am joy. I am peace. I am present. Whatever you want this day to be, just declare it right here, right now. In the stillness of this moment, I let it all go. I drop down into that truth of who I am. And I declare, I am love. Peace, whatever you want to declare. In the stillness of this moment, here comes I am. I am. In the stillness of this moment, I am. I am. Here you go. And I rest and trust and trust and breathe and breathe and know and know that in the stillness that in the stillness of this moment I am what are you? say another one I am I am joy, I am love, I am. Why don't we all sing together, I am love. I am love. I am love. I am love. So as a way 
every morning for me to get into that place of love. I put my hand over my heart and I ask my heart, what do you need to tell me today? What do you need today? What do you want today? Whatever language you want to use, you just check in with your heart. You say, what is mine to do? What is mine to be? Because when we take the time to listen to our heart in the morning, it makes all the difference in how our day unfolds. But we have to listen. So here's a great, great quote I found. Listening to your heart Finding out who you are is not simple. It takes time for the chatter to quiet down. In the silence of not doing, we begin to know what we actually feel. If we listen and hear what is being offered, then anything in life can be our guide. But we need to listen. So when we let go of what we're holding on to, we can claim what we want to have. So right now, with each breath you take, I let go of trying to control things and I make way for the new. I let go of that inner critic and I breathe in love for myself. I let go and breathe out comparison and I breathe in and claim my self-worth. I breathe in and let go, actually I breathe out and let go of any feelings that I'm not enough. And I breathe in and claim that there's nothing more I need to do, that who I am is enough. I breathe out and let go of that inner critic and trying hard. And I breathe in and claim being gentle with myself, knowing what it is that I need and giving that to myself. being gentle with myself. That's one of the keys here. And declaring, I will be gentle with myself. I will be gentle with myself. I'll hold myself like a newborn baby child. That's the whole thing right there. I will be gentle with myself I will be gentle with myself and I will hold myself like a newborn baby child can you sing that with me I will be gentle put your hand over your heart I will be gentle with myself I will be gentle with myself and I'll hold myself I'll hold myself like a newborn baby child Sing that again. I will be gentle with myself. I will be gentle with myself. And I will hold myself like a newborn baby child. I will be easy on myself. I will be easy on myself. I will be easy on myself. And I'll 
love myself. I love myself like a newborn baby child. Sing that again now. I will be easy on myself. I will be easy on myself. And I'll love myself. And I love myself like a newborn baby child. Now listen to this next part. And I will only go as fast as the slowest part of me feels safe to go. Doesn't that give you permission? I'll only go as fast. I'll only go as fast as the slowest part of me feels safe to go. Because now I know I am gentle. I am gentle with myself. I am gentle with myself. And I love myself. I love myself like a newborn baby child. I am gentle with myself. I am gentle with myself. And I love myself. I love myself like a newborn baby child. So let me read you this little part. One more little thing about being gentle with yourself. It's allowing yourself to take that time to say, what is it that I need today? What is my heart saying? And I found this reading that I just love. If you're exhausted, rest. If you don't feel like starting a new project, then don't. If you don't feel the urge to make something new, just rest in the beauty of the old, the familiar, and the known. If you don't feel like talking, just stay silent. If you're fed up with the news, turn it off. If you want to postpone something till tomorrow, do it. If you want to do nothing, let yourself do nothing today. Feel the fullness of the emptiness, the vastness, of the silence, the sheer life in your unproductive moments. Time does not always need to be filled. You are enough simply in your being. In the stillness of this moment, I am peace. I am peace. In the stillness of this moment, I am peace, I am peace, and I rest, and trust, and breathe, and breathe, take a deep, long breath, and know that in the stillness of this moment, I am peace, I am love, I am love. I am gentle with myself. I am gentle. I am love. I am love. I am here. I am here. I am love. I am love. And you are. Well, good morning once again. Good to be here with you today. You know, earlier this week, I heard a song that I hadn't heard in a long while. And the song comes from the movie, The Color Purple. And that movie is based upon the book of the same name by Alice Walker. And the name of the song is God's Trying to Tell You Something or something, as some, some folks would say. And this song popped into my mind as I was thinking about what to share today because it triggered a moment in my own life just before I made the decision, a decision I made reluctantly to go to Unity Ministerial School. I had just gone through my dark night of the soul and through recovery. I finally come out to the other side and I was ready to get on what I thought would be the rest of my life. And this thought, this idea, this notion of me going to ministerial school 
came into my mind. And needless to say, I have to say, I did not see that as anything that I would ever do. And I always tell people if a thousand things on a to-do list as possibilities showed up, this would not be on it. But every day for a year, the idea popped into my awareness. And I would say no. It would come into my awareness and I would say no. It would come into my awareness again and I would say, heck no. But this took place, I think, for at least a year. And I remember one day, I must have been in a state of surrender because I was at a, a youth fair with, uh, which has rides for kids and we were chaperoning a number of them. And while I was there in that state of surrender, a picture popped into my mind. A picture which I saw myself as a minister, which was unbelievable to me. And an electric current at that moment went through my entire body. And I knew in that instant I had to go. When I did, the events unfolded in a way that I could not have foreseen. Paths were cleared. Whatever I needed seemed to show up without any seeming effort. So the short story is here I am. And as I look back, I realized I'd come face to face with what I call the awesome word of God. Now it doesn't show up necessarily as any words or something verbal, but it's a feeling, a knowing, something that you cannot deny but know is real. And I've come to understand that this word of God, this word of the force, if you don't like the word God, this divine something is from a vision or a plan we use to create for our life. It's a vision or a plan that inspires us, and it fuels us, it catapults us into a dimension of possibility. It makes us, you know, when we have that kind of vision, when we have visions, it makes us feel expanded and we feel good. And we begin to look out and we see the possibilities unfolding in our life and in our world. Because there's an expansion of our soul. And when we have that kind of vision, that literally becomes the fuel for the action that you and I must take on earth in order to manifest. But what I discovered is that visions are wonderful. Because visions are magnificent. They're even necessary. As I say, you know, in Proverbs, where there is no vision, the people perish. But I realized that a vision or a plan is distinct from the awesome word of God. The awesome word of God is different. Sometimes when we read uh, the scriptural references, you know, we interpret that to mean, to, you know, awesome to be fear. Sometimes awesome and fear are interchangeable. Sometimes they should be, perhaps. Because when the awesome word of God, the logos of the universe speaks, and your heart hears it, my heart hears it, the high vibration of what is begins to move through us, the essence of God. And when that awesomeness and that word begins to take over our life, it changes us forever. There's a vision that makes us fly. But the awesome word of God makes us sometimes uncomfortable. We may resist it. Like if you know the story of Moses when he was called to lead the people out of Egypt, out of bondage to the promised land. He felt he wasn't capable of doing this. He said, I was poor of speech. I don't know how to lead people. And then he encountered the burning bush, which which really represents something that is recurring within him to assure him this was his to do. But it wasn't comfortable. He resisted it. You know, the word of God challenges us right where we live. It's saying to you, it's saying to me, there is more to you to come out. There's more to you to come forward. There is more possibility there. There's a place in you that you must change, that you must be different. When the awesome word of God begins to take over your life, you know, we don't like it all the time. I know I didn't. We try to shut it out. We really don't know what, what it means. We don't even want to hear it. 
Because, you know, we have our plan. We have our destiny. We have our goal. We have our own human to-do list. We, have, we got things to do. We're busy. We got it all worked out in our mind. And it applies to us individually. And even as a collective society, we have this idea of what we think we should be doing. You know, we got to get stuff together. We got to do this or that. We got to get our nails done. No small thing, as I understand. We got to take care of this. And then there's that that we have to do. And we really don't want to hear the awesome word of God because it's disturbing. You know, I was reading the other day, you know, Mark Cuban, who's the owner of the Dallas Mavericks. And he's reflecting upon the, the protest that arose as a result of the killing of George Floyd several weeks ago. And he said it was forcing people to talk about a topic that many find to be uncomfortable. The topic around race relations. And we could say that event and the subsequent protests are our own burning bush as a collective society. The awesome word of God for our collective consciousness. And oftentimes when things happen, it's disturbing. It's disturbing some element within our own soul. And we know when we listen and we follow it, that somehow, some way, we know we're not going to be the same when the awesome word of God begins to come forward and you and I begin to listen to it, it scares the ego, it scares the unspiritualized ego. It begins to tear us down in some way. And all that you and I think is our destination is often rolled up like scraps of paper and tossed and filed away. It's filed away so we can live the life that God sees for you, sees for me, sees for our world. That God sees for itself being expressed through us. We're talking about an awesomeness. We're talking about the awesome word of the spirit of living God. And people may ask, well, how do you know you heard the word of God? How do you know this coming from the force, this universal intelligence? Well, first of all, as I noted, it's disturbing. That's usually a clue. If it's frightening and you say, no, not me, there's a clue for you there. Because if it's just stroking you and it's just saying, oh, you're beautiful. Oh, you're lovely. lovely. Oh, you're just magnificent just as you are. Then it's probably not that awesome word of God. But when that awesome word of God comes and says, I need you. There is more of you that you're not giving of yourself. That word is saying there's some potential within you and you're just sitting on it. We don't want to sit on that potential. And so that word is saying in so many words, there's something about you that you need to take care of in your life. We may think that this is just going to be taken care of in the sweet by and by. Maybe at some point we'll get around to it or the universe will handle it. Or it'll be handled by someone else. But this word of God, this consciousness of God, this burning bush awareness is saying, uh-uh. You are the one to take care of it. But you got to work with it to see it. See, this word of God, this awesome word of God comes as a challenge to our present state of awareness. It's challenging us. It's challenging us in a ways to, for us to be more, to be more of the greatest yet to be for ourselves and for our world. You know, when we talk about the vision, which I talked about earlier, was like slightly distinct from the word of, of God as I just define it. The vision makes us fly. It makes us feel good. It inspires us. It's inspirational. It's reminding us, yes, I'm great, but the word of God says, yes, but you've got to grow to get there. And growth is not easy. It means change, it means transformation, it means not being the same anymore. And you and I know when the word of God comes because it is disturbing. It's waking us up. The word will make you love in places where you don't want to love. 
this word of God comes and it takes place within you where you don't want to go. We may say to ourselves, I don't want to love that deeply. I don't want to forgive that much. I don't want to do that kind of work. But when that awesome word comes, it is taking no prisoners, you see. It's taking you on us really as, as, as a spiritual hostage, if you could say that you know, analogy. And this is what we've been praying for. We may not acknowledge it. This is what we've been wanting. Because on some level, our soul is saying you wanted to be the best and the highest that you could be, potentially. You know, I remember a story I saw in a news program a while back. And it's a story of a journalist. And the journalist wanted to go to Palestine to seek revenge. Because she found out that there was someone there that attempted to kill her father. And all the conflict was going on at the time. And so she planned, plotted to figure out a way to get her revenge against the person who was the perpetrator of this. And, and to make a long story short, there was a time that she actually went to the courthouse. After the perpetrator was convicted, there was an impulse within her for her to have revenge. It was in full effect. But something erupted within her to seek reconciliation, to speak words of forgiveness. You know, instead of going for the revenge that she had planned. And what would happen with her in that courtroom did not in any way was orchestrated by her. It seemed to be beyond time and space. She went into a dimension where picked up the, the word that she should do something different. And when that word took her over, it took her beyond her opinion. It took her beyond the prevailing point of view. And as a result of what she did, a whole slew of lives were healed and people were transformed. And the awesome word of God brought her to a place of divine love that was probably not there in a place that she did not want to go. This is more than being theoretical. Because oftentimes we hear, you know, let's love everybody. Kumbaya. Regardless of what they have done, we shall overcome, we say. Let there be peace on earth. But in that moment, the reality of something took her over her life. And it stretched her beyond her wildest comprehension. She didn't understand why she did it. And everyone involved in that drama, everyone involved in her life, the life of the family of the shooter, were never the same. It was uncomfortable. It was disturbing. It was contrary to anything that she wanted to do. But she picked up that awesome word of God. It penetrated her awareness. You know, I think this awesome word of God, when we feel it, and it's something you can't really put in words, it takes us to areas where we may not want to go. You know, this awesome word of God takes us into places where we have a greater degree of bravery and generosity that we did not plan on having. This burning bush consciousness steers us in a way that heads us in a way that we had not Playing before. I know I just ask you how many times you walked through a situation or a circumstance and you literally heard the egoic mind say something to the effect, you know, I'm just going to go to this particular place for a moment. I'm going to go this, that, or, or, or the other, kind of act like I want to be there, like I'm interested. And we give a little bit of our time and attention. But really, I want to kind of move on to the next thing because I got somewhere to go. I got something to be. And then as you move in, something may have taken you over. You know, I was watching a movie, a series of movies. I don't know, I just on Netflix. And, and it was a story about, you know, a, you know, a church life and family that was there. And in this particular scene, there was a, a minister on his way to the hospital. 
And he was there to settle a grievance that he had with a friend. And before he went into the room, he happened to see a woman who was sitting in the waiting room, the waiting area. And she was obviously very, very distraught. And of course, at that moment, he was not inclined to help anyone at that moment. And also, he knew that she represented a group of people who he thought was out to get him. But in an instant, something took him over. And she, he started talking to the woman, asked her what was going on with her. And she found out that her dad was ill and very near death. And of course, she was very distraught and he ended up conversing with her, comforting her even praying with him. Something came through him in that moment. And it changed how he showed up when he visited the man that he had the grievance with that was in that hospital. He followed that something within him that came through him. And he forgave that man, something that he did that was very atrocious that probably would be very difficult for him to forgive at all. And I believe for him, it was that word of God, that awesomeness of God moving through him. Because it's beyond our plans. It's beyond what we can usually work through because it's that challenging. Because if it's challenging you to be more ourselves, like I said, that's usually a clue that it might be coming from that awesome word of the spirit of the living God. It could be that burning bush within you. It's telling us to bring out more of who and what we are here to be. I think about the words from the prophet Jeremiah who spoke about God in terms as, when I mean, he said these words, I believe, he said, you seduced me and overwhelmed my life. That God seduced Jeremiah and then totally took over his life. You know, in the 20th chapter of that that book, I think the seventh through ninth verse, Jeremiah said, when I choose not to speak in God's name, it's like a fire burning in my heart, in my bones. And when I don't follow that guidance, he says in so many words, then I exhaust myself trying to hold on to being who I needed to be or wanted to be. I think he's saying there's moments when you try not to Follow those guiding words. But there's a burning in the heart. There's a burning in the soul. There's a burning in the bones that takes us over. And if we resist, it will exhaust us when we're trying not to do what we must do. And I think that's what I felt when I sought to resist taking on this spiritual path. But we can take it to the challenges that we're facing in our society and world today. we got a lot of challenges that sense of separation of so many fronts, racially, politically. Yet when that word of God comes, you and I can no longer be neutral. We have to take a stand. Someone said that, you know, the hottest place in hell, which is not a place, but if it were, is reserved for those in time of moral crisis who remain neutral. The word of God is not neutral in any way. Because if we remain neutral, we'll be spewed from the mouth of God. We'll be lukewarm, as the spiritual reference says. We must lose our neutrality. And we have to stand in truth as we understand it to be within all of us as a complete humanity. The awesome word of God is seeking to take over our life. You know, on some level, our egoic structure, our unspiritualized ego may be fighting off this word of God. It's fighting it off as hard as we can. Because, you know, it's checking with public opinion. And it may be saying, am I going to be liked? Am I going to be popular? Are people going to agree with me? It's checking what's popular in the culture. It's going along with the herd. The egoic structure is checking it out. It's checking out all of this. What's it going to do with my time, it may be asking. What's it going to do with me, this word of God that may be trying to take over with my life? 
What's it going to do with the convenience that's going on with me now? There's something within all of us that's trying to maybe prevent the word of God from coming forth and expressing itself. But understand that every time we pray and connect with the presence, we're letting in a little bit more light so that we may be guided and directed by this presence. Until one day, it's just over takes our life completely. Of course, in the beginning, we may be a little upset. Sorry to tell you, sometimes it's not according to our plan. But I tell you this much, when it begins to work on your soul, when you begin to let it happen, when you begin to allow the will of the will of God to be done in and as your life and my life, it is a life that is free from fear. We're talking about our life that's surrendered to the will of God presence. But we don't care about the, the other things anymore. It's about what's going to happen next when we get into that flow. Because when we get into that flow, then we are embraced by the spiritual presence. And when we live there, the worry that we may have had about anything begins to dissolve. We live with a divine knowing that everything is working together for your good, my good, the planet's good. And knowing that regardless of what the source is, there is always an infinite amount of supply because there are always another idea waiting to be expressed through us and through our life. There are always divine and perfect spiritual solutions even when we can't seem to see it. We want to live in that awareness. And like I said, initially it may not feel good, but within it is a peace that passes all human understanding. And it can begin to take over our very life and being so that we can literally be a fiat, a channel of the spirit. Because it applies to all of us. There are no special people on the planet. There are people who have learned especially to listen and hear the awesome word of God when it's trying to come through. And then they are duly anointed because they are listening and increasing their capacity to attune with this presence so that we can catch that word. So know that as you pray at home, as you meditate, as you study, as you stretch, whatever you do as your spiritual practice, you can rightly see the vision and be inspired by it and then be called by the awesome word of God to take you to the next level. To take you to the next level in order to download and reveal all of the kingdom of God, which is ever expanding good. It is there for us. And of course, when we begin to do that, something within us will change. Our language will change. We'll begin instead of saying things like, you know, those people over there, they don't know what they're doing. It's easy to say that. Some people have a very weird way of being in the world. We may say, oh, those people over there, they're crazy. Those people on that side of the world, they're nuts. Those people, oh, they're, they're extreme in their views. Those people over there, they just don't know what's going on. Or we may say these others over here, they're compassionate. Well, these people are loving. They're my kind of folks. But our language will begin to change. We will begin to see the world differently when we allow the word of God to come through and as us and realize our oneness. And we'll say things like, some of us are extreme. Some of us are compassionate. Some of us are beautiful. Some of us are crazy. Some of us are out of our mind. Yet once we begin to say some of us, instead of them and they, the neurological vegetative response of our being responds to that language. Something changes within us. We begin to break down the barriers that we've created in our own minds. And we'll open up to a new dimension and we'll begin to see the word of God, hear the word of God, feel the burning bush within us. And realize there isn't any them. It's all us. It's one. It's all now. 
and then our action will be in harmony with a glimpse of the oneness that we are capturing. We may not know exactly what the action will be, but it'll always be for our highest and best for all concerned. I think listening and being guided by this word of God in our world today is so critical. It's saying us today, at this time in history, now more than ever, be open and receptive to this divine, awesome word. It applies to us as individuals. It applies to us as a collective. You know, it applies to our own individual endeavors, you know, and visions. No matter what we're doing in our corner of the world, we're writing a poem, we're writing a song, we're working on something. We're looking for that perfect line, that right phrase, and then suddenly, when we are in tune with that awesome word of God on a regular basis, out of nowhere it drops in. The perfect hook, the perfect line, the perfect statement. And we'll be able to say, where did it come from? Well, it was there all along. Now we're thinking more about it. And as a result of giving our attention to it, it begins just to drop in like a grace note from the Spirit. Well, as I close out, just know that when I talk about the awesome Word of God, like I said, we call it many different names, the divinity, whatever we want to call it. It is a reminder that, that when we go into our prayer work and our spiritual work, we're not seeking to tell God or this presence what to do. When we surrender to it, it's a reminder for us to listen what God has for you and for me to do. And how can we be the arms, the legs, the voice, the instrument of the spirit? Because we're all made in the image and likeness of this presence. And as you and I listen, lowly listen, and then affirm what we're listening to, we will watch as this so-called upside-down world begins to turn right side up. The temptations of the world, temptations, what I mean, things like consciousness of hate, consciousness of separation, will have no effect on our consciousness and awareness because we'll remain undistracted by the distractions because our attention is on the one. Our attention is listening to that awesome word we will understand that if our eye is single, we're focusing on that and that alone, then our body and our body of affairs called our life will be full of life and will bring it to the very planet in which we live. Because we are reminded that you and I are the light that lighted up every man and woman that comes into the world. And all of us are affirming the word of God, that awesome word of God within our own being. And as we do, as we go beyond anything that our human minds are seeking to understand, we will begin to capture that word of God and magnificent worlds will unfold beyond what we could imagine. We listen and we follow that awesome word of God. We anchor a little bit more of heaven in our life and on the very planet in which we live. Peace and blessings to you. Thank you for being part of our service today. As each of us remain open and receptive to the awesome word of the spirit of the living God. Just as a reminder, next Sunday, my talk is the fire of realization. And also next Sunday, we will have newly recorded music by Soul Light Connections. So you don't want to miss that. At this time, I'd like to give a special thank you and shout out to those who worked the Over the Rainbow event that just took place. It took a while for us to get there, but as they say, you know, the third time is the charm. And it could not have happened without a wonderful team to make that take place. So I'd like to express a thank you to our hosts, J.G. Gonzalez, Heather Astai, our production team, which was Celia coughlin Surridge and Elaine LaRoa, We'd also like to give a special shout out to the members of the Over the Rainbow team that included Nancy Hilton, Paula Mandela, Pat Harvey, 
and the one person over the Rage Bowl registration team made up the one and only Jeannie Chesko. And Jeannie managed all of the over the rainbow registrations uh, online from her home. So a magnificent job for uh, the, what Jeannie has done. At this time, it's an opportunity to help us continue to send out the spiritual experience, not just what we do each Sunday, but also the Wednesday evening WOW program, uh, the prayer and meditation classes, and other experiences that take place during the week that are happening now and will continue to take place in the future. And we're going to let you know more about that uh, shortly. At this time, I invite you to support Spiritual Life Center with your donation and to give what you can. It makes a tremendous difference and is highly appreciated. You can give by texting SLC Love to 44321. That's SLC Love to 44321. Or you can go to our website, slcworld.org, click the donate tab, and that'll give you other ways that you can give, including by mail. And with that, I invite you to join in and say our offertory blessing with me. Divine love, as me, blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, and all that I circulate. Thank you, God. Okay, we're gonna get get down a little bit now. I want you to dance with me now. <clears throat> this or something better is waiting for me. I know this or something better is the key that will set my heart free. I'm gonna let go of control. I'm gonna get out of my way. I know the universe conspires to bring me heaven today. I know that this or something better, you singing with me now, is waiting for me. Sing that line again. I know this or something better is the key that will set my heart. Is the key that will set my heart free. I'm tired of playing it small. I'm doing what I think I should. The universe stands up to meet me to claim my highest form of good. I know that this or something better is waiting for me. I know, I know this or something better is the key that will set my heart free. Are you ready? I gotta play a kazoo every time I am with you all. I know it, I claim it, I have it right now. I claim it, I have it right now. I know it, I claim it, I have it right now. I know it, I claim it. I have it right now, and this or something better is waiting for me. I know, I know that this or something better is the key that will set my heart free. I'm going to say yes to my dreams. Let my imagination soar. I know that I have gifts that I must use. Cause that is what I was put here for. I know that this or some are you dancing around the room, I hope, is waiting. Do this for me. Waiting for me. I know that this or something better is the key that'll set my heart free. I know it, I claim it, I have it right now. I know it, I claim it. I have it right now. Say that. I know it. I claim it. I have it right now. I know it. I claim it. I have keep, it. Keep right doing that. Now. I say I know it. I claim it. I have it right now. I know it. I claim it. I have it right now. I know it. I claim it. I have it right now. I know it. I claim it. So you keep singing that, all right? And I'm 
go. What you gonna do? What you what you wanna be? What you gonna do? What you what you wanna see? What you gonna do? What you what you wanna be? What you gonna do right now? What you gonna do? What you what you wanna be? What you gonna do? What you what you wanna see? What you gonna do? What you what you wanna be? What you gonna do right now? What you gonna do? What you what you wanna be? What you gonna do? What you what you wanna see? What you gonna do? What you what you wanna be? What you gonna do right now? What you gonna do? What you what you wanna be? What you gonna do? What you what you wanna see? With that, let us go and say together our prayer for protection. The, the light, light of God, God surrounds us. us. I, I am, am the light, light of God. God. The, the love, love of God, God enfolds us. us. I, I am the love of God. God. The, the power, power of God, God protects, protects us. I am the power, the power of God. God. The, the presence of God watches over us. I am the presence of God. God. Wherever we are, God is, I am, and all is well. All right, Spiritual Life Center, thank you for having me today. I hope you'll sing along with me on this one. Let there be peace, I am a stand for peace. Let there be love, I am a stand for love. Let there be joy. I'm a stand for joy, and we are making a new world right now. Do you get that? Let there be peace. I am a stand for peace. Let there be love. I am a stand for love. Let there be joy. I am a stand for joy. We are making a new world now. That's the whole thing. Let there be peace. I am a stand for peace. Let there be love. Let there be joy. I am a stand for joy. We are making a new world now. Sing it out now. Let there be peace. I am a stand for peace. Let there be love. And I am a stand for love. Let there be joy. I am a stand for joy. We are making a new world now. One more time. Let there be peace. Let there be love. I am a stand for love. Let there be joy. I am a stand for joy. We are making a new world now again. We are making a new world now. We are making a new world now. Thanks for listening, everyone. I hope I'm up there with you again soon. Love to all of you. Spiritual Life Center.